Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, you are going to see answers for all exercise questions from chapter four, carbon and its compounds from your grade 10 science in CRT textbook. Let us see first question. Here you can observe ethane with the molecular formula C2H6 has dash covalent bonds. How many covalent bonds do you have? First, to answer this question, you have to draw the diagram C2 first carbon, second carbon and H6. First of all, you see C2H6 relationship between 2 and 6 is N, 2N plus 2. So if it is 2, 4 plus 2, that is 6. So it is alkane, alkane in the sense, all single bonds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here under, we'll get hydrogens. <clears throat> so answer will be 7 covalent bonds. Next, number 2. Butanone is a 4 carbon compound with a functional group. Okay, we have to observe its functional group. First of all, what they have given? Butanone. How to divide this one? But stands for 4 carbon. An means all single bonds. Own is a functional group of ketone. What is the functional group of ketone? That is C double bond O. And this side and this side, there should be only carbons, not hydrogens. If you place hydrogen, what it will become? Double bond O. And if it is hydrogen, it will become aldehyde. So, what is the functional group present? Ketone. Here you can observe option C, ketone. While cooking, if the bottom of the vessel is getting blackened on the outside, it means that there are four options. Why the bottom of the vessel will be blackened? First, the food is not cooked completely. No. If food is not cooked completely, food will be black and not the vessel. Here the fuel is burning completely. If fuel is burning completely, definitely there will be no black soot observed. Fuel is wet. If fuel is wet, it will not burn first of all. You see the fuel is not burning completely. Here, if you observe hydrocarbon compounds, there are two types of hydrocarbon compounds. First one is saturated. Second one is unsaturated. While coming to saturated, it is very good fuel and it will burn completely without releasing any smoke, soot, etc. But while coming to unsaturated, there will be incomplete combustion. It will release soot, black smoke, etc. So answer is B, the fuel is not burning completely because that might be unsaturated. Fourth question, explain the nature of covalent bond using bond formation of CH3Cl. So how CH3Cl is formed? First of all, you try to understand CH3Cl. C stands for carbon carbon has four valencies and here in the formula you can observe H3 first hydrogen here second hydrogen is here third hydrogen is here and what is the extra element you can find that is chlorine chlorine atomic number is 17 it has one valency that chlorine will be sharing one electron from the carbon hence it will be forming like this that you can represent like carbon this carbon you can write it like this and carbon has four valencies one two three four and here there will be hydrogen with one valency, here second hydrogen with one valency and chlorine, atomic number is 17, if you write electronic configuration, 2, 8, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and while coming to another hydrogen it is 7 and you can draw circles here, like that bond is formed. Next, fifth question, draw the electron dot structure for ethanoic acid, H2S, propanone, F2. You see, by the name, we have to divide it. Ethanoic acid, first of all, eth, eth stands for meth, eth, so two carbons. So we can draw two carbons, you can represent. Next to two letters, you can observe it is ane, means single bond. Here at last, we have oic acid, ethanoic acid, I mean oic acid is a functional group of carboxylic acid. If you observe that carboxylic acid, it will be single bond OH and double bond O. Then valency satisfaction for carbon. If you observe this carbon, four valences should be there. One is already there, two, three, four. If you observe the second carbon, one, two, three, four. Then you have to represent all hydrogens. But here they are not asking you to write the formula. They are asking you to draw the dot structures. Dot structures in the sense you have to use those dots and cross marks to represent electrons. So this how can you write? So mention two carbons like this and valence is for the carbon. One, two, three, four. For this carbon, one and here, two, three. And oxygen, we know oxygen atomic number is eight. If you write electronic configuration, it is two comma six. So it will be one, two for oxygen. You can represent like this. One, two, three, four, 
5, 6 and it is if you observe OH, so O and H, oxygen and hydrogen, hydrogen its valency is 1. So OH, hydrogen will share 1 electron from the oxygen and it will be stable and oxygen will share 1 electron from carbon and 1 electron from hydrogen, it will be stable and this side if you observe again we have another oxygen here, this one that can be represented like this and oxygen valency count is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 you can represent and this oxygen will take 2 electrons from the carbon and here there will be 4 valencies like that carbon will be combining with all I mean one carbon will combine with some other carbon and here there will be hydrogen like that it is formed. Next H2S while coming to H2S there are two hydrogens and one sulfur while coming to hydrogen its atomic number is 1 sulfur atomic number is 16 for sulfur electronic configuration sorry for hydrogen electronic configuration is 1 for sulfur electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 6 such that sulfur S we have to represent 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 and hydrogen here there will be one hydrogen with one electron there will be another hydrogen with one electron this hydrogen will share sulfur electron this hydrogen will share one electron of the sulfur sulfur will share one electron of this hydrogen and one electron of another hydrogen such that it will be bonded like this you can observe and so here there will be no electron here so there will be bond here so you can erase this so now it will be clear for you carbon 4 valencies 1 2 3 4 1 electron will be given to this oxygen 2 electrons for this oxygen 1 electron for this carbon and hydrogen will be 1 like that it will be bonded and here there will be another hydrogen here there will be another hydrogen next propanone by the name itself we can get prop meth eth prop meth eth prop an means single bonds o means ketone there will be double bond o remaining valency satisfaction if you observe for this first carbon 1 already there 2 3 4 for second carbon 1 2 3 4 already there 4 valencies for third carbon 1 2 3 4 remaining you can represent hydrogens you can draw electron dot structure and while coming to f2 fluorine oxygen fluorine neon oxygen 8 fluorine 9 neon 10 so fluorine atomic number is 9 if you write electronic configuration 2 comma it is 7 so if you see fluorine 7 valence electrons you have to represent 1 2 3 4 5 6 it is 7 take another fluorine with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there will be single bond between fluorine such that only one pair of electron will be present like that you have to draw dot structures so this is direct question what is an homologous series homologous series is a series of carbon guys we are in carbon and its compound so that you can use the word carbon or you can say it is a series of a compound or any compound that have different numbers of carbon atoms but contains the same functional group so there should be same functional group that should be repeated further so we have three types of functional groups i mean uh, homologous series if you observe alkane alkene and alkyne here if you see general formula of alkane it is cn h 2n plus 2 alkene it is cn h 2n alkyne it is cn h 2n minus 2 same carbons and hydrogens it will be repeating so in the name itself we can observe homo in the sense same species logo so that will be repeating repeating in a series called homologous series with the same functional group and the general formula if you observe common in these cn h 2n is common but if it is alkane we will add plus 2 if it is alkene we will add nothing if it is alkyne we will remove 2 from the group so cn h 2n is common so that will be repeating further and you can observe alkanes means methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane like that. Alkene, meth is not present, not possible. Ethene, propane, butene, pentene like that. Alkyne, meth is not possible. Ethyne, propane, butane, pentane like that it will be going on. That is the continuation process in the homologous series. Seventh question, how can ethanol and ethanoic acid be differentiated on basis of their physical and chemical properties? Physical properties means by using our senses, if you can say, I mean by observing smell, taste, hearing, touching, if you say that those are physical properties and while coming to chemical properties by means of reactions, we can say. 
you see ethanol is nothing but alcohol ethanoic is nothing but simply to say vinegar right next well coming to alcohol and uh, ethanoic acid how it will be first of all ethanol is a liquid at room temperature of course ethanoic acid also will be at liquid at room temperature with a pleasant odor while ethanoic acid like vinegar smell because that is acid some pungent smell you will get it the melting point of ethanoic acid is 17 degrees celsius such that what will happen below room temperature if it is winter season that ethanoic acid will be freezed so the 20 ethanoic acid is also known as glacial acetic acid next ethanoic while well, coming to chemical properties ethanoic acid reacts with metal carbonates in acids and bases we have learned when acid if it is reacting with metal carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonate what are the products you can find salt you can get carbon dioxide you can get water you can get if you remember so if ethanoic acid reacts with metal carbonates and metal hydrogen carbonates to form salt water co2 and while coming to ethanol i mean alcohol doesn't react with them so alcohol alcohol plus metal carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonate gives rise to no reaction if you observe in text question answers same thing we have discussed so here question number 1 in text question right page number 74 next so these equations you can write it which is uh, available on screen at the same time in your textbook too eighth question why does micelles formation takes place when soap is added to water will a micelle be formed in other solvents such as ethanol also so first of all how that micelles are formed we have to understand soap molecule has two ends if you observe there will be two ends for the soap molecule hydrophobic and hydrophilic here this end which will be combining with oil droplets or dust particles or grease something so it will be combining these particles will be combining with the water it will dissolve in water this is hydrophilic this is hydrophobic tail part is hydrophobic part and head part is hydrophilic part you see hydrophilic and hydrophobic when a soap is dissolved in water what will happen cloths are put in the soapy solution soap molecules converge in a typical fashion to make structure called micelles here there will be dust particles let us assume this is dust particle or oil particle whenever soap particle is added and this is head and tail will be attached to this oil so all tails different soap molecules that will be attached to that oil particle and it will form one special structure this structure is known as micelle the hydrophobic end of different molecules around a particle of grease and make the micelle you see this is hydrophobic end this part is hydrophobic end that will be hydrophobic end hydrophobic end of different molecules surround a particle of grease so this is grease particle middle that will be surrounded by those particles and it will make micelle which is spherical structure so you can observe that it will be in a spherical structure in this hydrophilic end is outside the sphere and hydrophobic end towards the center of the sphere so this part this part is hydrophilic that will be outside and this part is hydrophilic that will be inside towards the center this is why micelle formation takes place when soap is added to water so that only you can observe the micelles micelle is not formed what he asked will a micelle be formed in other solvents like uh, ethanol also answer is no it will not form micelles are not formed in other solvents such as ethanol that is the answer you have to write it why are carbon and its compounds used as fuel for most applications already we have discussed when carbon if it is oxidized i mean if it, if you heat that uh, carbon dioxide we will get i mean sorry if you heat carbon compound simply to say if carbon is reacting with oxygen it gives carbon dioxide or carbon oxide plus heat good amount of heat is produced at the same time carbon compounds two times you can get first one is saturated carbon compounds unsaturated hydrocarbon compounds or carbon compounds saturated will be acting as very good fuel it will be giving good amount of heat energy it will have very high calorific value at the same time no soot no smoke is released so most of the carbon compounds give lot of heat and light when burnt in air saturated carbons this one saturated will burn with a clean flame and no smoke is produced the carbon compounds as a fuel have high calorific value good amount of heat is produced therefore carbon and its compounds are used as fuels that is the answer you have to write it explain the formation of scum when hard water is treated with soap 
water there will be two types soft water and hard water in soft you see water soft water and hard water in soft water what we can use soaps you can use in hard water detergents you can use now what they are asking explain the formation of scum when hard water is treated with soap so in hard water what we have to use you have to use detergents but if you use soaps in hard water what will happen it is simple soap doesn't work properly when water is hard so soap work properly when water is soft but soap doesn't work when water is hard it is not possible a soap is a sodium or potassium salt if you observe the soap there will be sodium ions at the same time potassium ions in a soap and long chains of fatty acids hard water contains salt of calcium and magnesium if you take hard water there will be calcium ions and magnesium ions when soap is added to hot water so when the sodium and potassium if it is added to calcium and magnesium what will happen calcium and magnesium ions present in water displace sodium or potassium ion from the soap molecules so what it will do it will not combine it will displace all these and it will form a colloidal solution colloidal solution which seems to be like true solution but it is not true solution so after displacing sodium or potassium from the soap molecules what it will do it will form one insoluble substance which is not soluble in water that is nothing but scum a lot of soap is wasted in this process so that soap particles i mean sodium potassium particles cannot be dissolved in hard water instead of dissolving it will displace all the particles of outside after displacing there will be scum particles and soap total amount of soap is wasted so that in hard waters we should not use normal bathing soaps we have to use only detergents and soaps you have to use in soft water only 11 what change will you observe if you test soap with litmus paper we all know that soap is basic in nature and if blue color litmus paper if it is turning to red that is known as acid but here soap is base then what litmus paper you have to use you have to use red color litmus paper if red is turning to blue color then that product or substance or solution is known as base so what test what change will you observe if uh, if you test soap with litmus paper red, red and blue if you test with blue litmus paper no change nothing you can observe blue remains the same but if you test with red color red will be turning into blue color that is a change you can observe well what is hydrogenation what is its industrial application guys while coming to carbon compounds and uh, while you are learning about the properties of carbon compounds there are four chemical properties you can observe first one oxidation second one combustion third one addition reaction fourth one substitution reaction so here hydrogenation will come under addition why hydrogenation is used it is quite simple if there are unsaturated solutions or unsaturated carbon compounds if you want to make unsaturated to saturated then we will use hydrogenation process simple what is hydrogenation addition of hydrogen so hydrogen is the process of addition of hydrogen unsaturated hydrocarbons are added with hydrogen you see guys if hydrogen is added to unsaturated it will become saturated simple but in presence of some catalyst of palladium or nickel what is meant by catalyst it is a product substance molecule element whatever it may be which will change rate of reaction so if you want to increase the rate of reaction or decrease the rate of reaction we have to use some products called catalyst now if you observe this diagram carbon in between carbon there are there is a double bond and consider there are hydrogens like this reactants nothing but hydrogen now if you observe it is not alkane it is alkene because of double bond now this is unsaturated if you want to make the unsaturated to saturated what you have to do you do you have to add two hydrogens to that if you add two hydrogens this one single bond i mean in the double bond one bond is removed if one bond is removed you see first of all try to observe the valency of the carbon for first carbon valency one two three four satisfied for second carbon valency one two three four satisfied if you remove one bond if you remove one if you observe the valency for first carbon it is one two three but it has to be four so 
what will happen guys c c 1 2 3 it has now it will be 4 while coming to second carbon 1 2 3 it has and fourth carbon so simply to say first you got all hydrogens here and after adding two hydrogens what will happen this double bond will become single bond and hydrogens can be added so addition of hydrogen is nothing but hydrogenation so this can be done what is its industrial application main use is hydrogenation of vegetable oil so vegetable oil, vegetable oil will have double bond such that that is unsaturated which is not good for our health so to convert that vegetable oil i mean from unsaturated to saturated saturated we will use hydrogenation process so if you add hydrogen to the vegetable oil it will become single bond vegetable oil simply to say saturated vegetable oil if you observe the oil packets they will be mentioning it is refined sunflower oil what is that refined simply to say hydrogenation 13th question which of the following hydrocarbon undergo addition reaction so now itself we have discussed which one should go under addition whenever the product is unsaturated unsaturated then only you have to add hydrogen to it if you add hydrogen to unsaturated it will become saturated so which one will undergo hydrogenation means unsaturated only will undergo hydrogenation they give few examples c to h6 so whenever compound is given please try to go with the relationship between two numbers how n 2n n 2n plus 2 n 2n minus 2 guys if it is n 2n plus 2 it is alkane n 2n it is alkene so this is alkane and this one is alkene and this one will be alkyne right so if it is alkene and alkyne definitely those are unsaturated c to h6 what is the relationship between 2 and 6 it is n 2n so if it is 2 2 into 2 4 plus 2 so it is 2n plus 2 so it is saturated so this one is saturated leave it c3 h8 3 3 into 2 6 6 plus 2 8 so this is also saturated leave it c3 h6 this is n this is 2n unsaturated next c2 h2 this is n 2n minus 2 this is unsaturated ch4 c1 and h4 so n 2n plus 2 this is saturated now these two are unsaturated simply to say these two will be undergoing hydrogenation so answer will be c3 h6 and c2 h2 like that you have to differentiate 14 give a test that can be used to differentiate chemically between butter and cooking oil guys it is not physically it is chemically physically in the sense you can use your senses you can observe you can smell you can taste you can hear you can touch such that you can say such type of properties are physical properties but now they are asking about chemically chemically means chemical properties by uh, reactions we can see butter and cooking oil we can go with a bromine water test that can be used to differentiate between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons how the addition of bromine br2 gives addition reaction with saturated compounds like alkenes you see like unsaturated unsaturated means double bonds you can use bromine same like hydrogen which is added to unsaturated it will become saturated right same like that bromine can be used to unsaturated to make it saturated simple so bromine if it is if you are adding bromine to the unsaturated compounds like alkenes and alkynes why alkenes are double bond alkynes are triple bond when bromine water is added to unsaturated compounds then bromine get added to the unsaturated compound and red to brown color of bromine water is discharged so when bromine is added to unsaturated it will become saturated what is the indication for the saturated red to brown color of bromine water is discharged so if an organic compound decolorizes bromine water then it will be unsaturated so whenever you get red to brown color thing red brown color water then you can say that one is unsaturated containing double and triple bond while coming to saturated i mean alkane single bond do not decolorize the bromine water water will be same that is the test for butter and cooking oil single and double bonds last question explain the mechanism of cleaning action of soap already we have discussed this one so it is quite simple the dirt present on cloths is organic in nature and insoluble in water so this dirt particles nothing but oil particles grease something which will not be soluble in water so that it is not possible for us to so therefore it cannot be removed only by washing with water because anyhow it is insoluble such that you cannot remove by using only water so that we need one supplement called soap soap is dissolved in water i mean detergent also it is hydrophobic end attaches themselves to the dirt and remove from the cloth 
So already we have discussed this one. If there is oil particle or grease particle in water, we can use soap. Soap will have two ends. This head part is known as hydrophilic and this tail part is known as hydrophobic. This hydrophobic part will not be dissolved in water, but it can be attached to oil particle. And then the molecules of soap arrange themselves in micelles. Micelles here you can observe all these are micelles formation and trap the dirt at the center of the cluster. So cluster means group such that you can observe many micelles, many soap particles and it will form a structure called this entire structure is known as micelles guys, not this one structure. So if you have group of soap particles that can be called as micelle and these micelles remain suspended in water, then what you can do just you can use some water to remove it because if you are adding water, this head particles will be dissolving in water. So along with the water flow, these particles also will move along with this head particle tail will move along with tail particle dust particles or oil particles grease particles will move away right like that we can clean dust and particles dust oil grease particles from the cloth. So these are exercise questions from chapter 4 carbon hundreds compounds.